Hey everybody, this is Caroline from V Technologies. Hope everyone's having a great afternoon. Um, I um, am here with Alex Rode and Chris Fletner, um, where we're going to be speaking about um, seven ways to simplify your pick, pack, and ship, um, and uh, going through the Panatrack and Starship integrations with Dynamics GT. Um, we're going to start with Alex, who will speak to uh, the Panatrack side of things with the picking and the packing, and then he'll um, send it over to Chris to speak to shipping. Um, everybody's currently on mute. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, we just ask that you put them into the questions pane on the control panel, and we'll try to um, leave enough time at the end to go through those. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Alex. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. So today I'm Alex with Panatrack, and we're going to talk a little bit from my perspective about the pick and pack capabilities on a solution like Panatrack and how that could integrate with V Technologies and the Starship platform. Order fulfillment can be a complex process, and we all know that it is paramount to ensuring customer satisfaction, making sure that the correct products are arriving at the customer on time the right size, the right color, when they ordered it and what they ordered is going to ensure repeat orders. It's going to ensure our company's continued growth. With the Panatracker GP solution, your team is no longer worried about marking off items on paper pick lists or paper pack lists, scribbling things down and hoping we got our quantities right. If we didn't fulfill something in full, recording that so that we know what's back ordered. The paper process is a headache and it adds extra overhead. Relying on customers or on employees to pick items of similar colors or sizes and hoping they grab the right one based on muscle memory with no real-time validation doesn't result in happy customers every single time. With Panatrack, we make sure that your customers are getting what they ordered, when they ordered, on time, and accurately fulfilled. With Panatrack or GP, the pickers aren't relying on that glance at the shelf to grab the right item. We're validating each and every item as it's picked off the shelf. We're allowing your team to capture packing box information, either as an individual step or as, um, as an individual step order verify transaction or as part of your order pick transaction. With customers who are using multi-bins, something that's much easier to use when you're running a barcoding solution such as Panatrack or GP, Users can now be directed to a picking bin location for each item as they fulfill the order. <clears throat> we actually walk your employees through the facility, picking each and every item based on our pick list sort order with that directed pick capability. Additionally, if we're shipping things that have lot numbers, serial numbers, expiration dates, things like that, Panatrack is going to capture those details. We're going to validate that they're correct, make sure it's an item that can be sold, that it's an item that's not expired. We can even warn users if it's not the soonest to expire lot to ensure proper first in, first out. Panatrack puts all of that capability in the hands of your employees on a dedicated barcode scanner. And that's just the order picking side of things. Additionally, Panatrack offers solutions for receiving purchase orders, moving inventory, counting inventory, manufacturing, um, central warehouse management with directed transfer. We've got all sorts of great inventory capabilities we can put in your team's hands to record your transactions when and where they occur. If you wanna learn more about that, follow up with me after the webinar here. We'll get you set up for a one-on-one -on -one demo uh, with myself and Lori from our team. Make sure we can answer all of your inventory questions and needs. A quick overview on the architecture of the Panatracker GP application. You can see on our slide here, we've got a few things. Primarily, Dynamics GP, that is our host inventory database. We've said it for a long time, we'll continue to say it. GP is your single source of truth. There is no need to duplicate data. There is no need to try to slam two databases together and hope that everything talks and works properly. With Panatracker GP, we're making sure that Dynamics GP is always going to be the home to your data. That connects to the Panatracker GP application running on our mobile devices, our barcode scanners. These devices range from pocket-friendly to ultra-rugged freezer-rated devices. I've got a scanner that'll work for any environment you need, from tablets to smartphones to keypad styles like you're seeing on the screen now. 
Those devices allow users to scan barcodes in real time with an embedded barcode scanner. It's worth noting, a barcode scanner makes something like one mistake in every 3.6 million scans on average. Um, I'm not sure I make one mistake in 3.6 million times entering the same password every time. The goal is to make sure that we're validating and verifying and barcodes are going to do that. Of course, with Panatrack, if you need to print barcode labels, we'll print barcode labels for you as part of your receiving transaction, as part of your assembly or manufacturing capabilities. Panatrack is here to make sure that your team can track that inventory from the moment it arrives until the moment it goes into the Starship system and heads out to happy customers. Sitting in between our application on the handheld devices and Dynamics GP as your host database is going to be the Panatrack portal. This handles our configuration settings, our user setup, our profiles. It also handles all of our detailed transaction logging. We'll keep a record of everything Panatrack submitted into Dynamics GP. Again, Dynamics will always be your host database. However, having a record of what was submitted, something that we can filter by user, by device, by time and date, that's a very important and capable feature for teams like your supervisors and managers who may not want to be logging into GP. Everything that happens on the Panatrack device operates over your wireless network back to Dynamics GP, ensuring real-time validation, real-time verification of all of our transactions. And best of all, Panatracker GP leverages the Microsoft eConnect platform, allowing us to capture all of our transactions, submit all of that into Dynamics GP for our distribution users and things, without the need to consume a GP user license. You can now leverage your system with a more efficient, more effective way of capturing that data, and you can save yourself on some licenses. Today, we're going to focus specifically on two transactions on the Panatrack devices, and that's going to be our order pick or fulfill transaction, where our user goes out into the warehouse, pulls items off the shelf to make sure they're the, making sure every step of the way that they're the correct item. Once we've pulled those items off the shelf, then our user is going to take that second step, that verify transaction, which is where we make sure that your users are packing items into the correct box. By packing items into the correct box, we can pass that along to Starship and that information comes through in real time. Now Starship knows exactly what was shipped to customers and they're gonna process everything that they need to. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's pull up the Panatrack device and let's show you what happens in a live environment with our Panatrack scanner when we're capturing our transactions. So what you're seeing today is an actual device I am using here at my desk. And let's go ahead, let's fulfill a sales order. So to access that, we're going to go to our Panatrack menu. We won't worry about the rest of our inventory, fixed asset or manufacturing transactions today. Again, I'm happy to show you that in a private call. Uh, we'll go to orders and we're going to select our fulfill order transaction. My user is now presented with the first screen, allowing that user to filter the orders that they can select from by the site location they're at, by the batch ID that is set to that order, or even to go so far as to filter those by the shipment method, ensuring that our priority orders can go out as fast as possible. Those three filters play a role here in our order selection. This is where our user tells the system what order they are going out to pick. For this, we're going to go ahead and access our Panatrack lookup list. Here we see all of the available orders that can be picked. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick order 1095 today. This is the stage where your employees may be making errors. They may be picking the wrong items off the shelf. With Panatrack, we prevent that. The first thing you see is it's giving us the item that we're told to pick. It also shows us the description of that item. We then see the quantity that is remaining to be picked on the left and the zero out of 100 picked on the right. Our next field is from bin. Now this is that directed picking bin that I talked about a little bit earlier. This is utilizing the Dynamics GP multi-bin environment. Not something your team needs to utilize to make use of Panatrack, but something that using Panatrack certainly makes easier. So we've been told it's bin A2001 and our user's off to A2001 to pick that item. We're onto the validate screen. This is an important step. This is when our user scans the barcode to make sure they're picking 
the correct item off the shelf. We're expected to pick 100, and if we pick 95 of this item, or 100 of this item, we can type that in right here on the screen. Once we've picked that, Panatrack takes us to the next item on the list. You'll notice it's walking me through based on my bin locations. So we're getting that route through the warehouse. Same thing, we validate our item. Scan the barcode, and now our user can enter in their quantity. Here, we're going to pick 50 off of our shelf, and you're gonna notice my quantities update in real time on the Panatrack device. We have two remaining, which gives me a great opportunity to show you a Panatrack feature where we consider any order under 10 items I'd like my user to scan each one each time it comes off. Whether that is a spare part for machinery, whether that is canned goods, grocery store equipment, t-shirts, whatever that may be, I have it set. So under 10 items, each time I scan that item as it comes off the shelf and goes into my cart, we can count, we can set that to count as one. We can then see how that increases our quantity and we move on to our next item. Now in that case, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select my bin location again, where we're gonna pick that inventory from, and we're gonna validate our last item. Now that we've picked that in full, our user moves on to that next item. And it's the same thing every step of the way. Here's what happens if somebody's not paying attention. They try to pick that incorrect item. When they scan the wrong item, they're given the warning message, this is not the correct item. We prevent your users from fulfilling orders with the wrong items, whether that's the size of a screw, whether that's the color of a t-shirt, anything like that. If it's not the right item for that line, Panatrack is going to prevent the user from picking it. They scan the correct item, and they can enter in the quantity that they're pulling off the shelf. When we have items that have serial numbers, if that's something that's important to our team and we need to capture serial numbers when we're fulfilling orders, Panatrack can do that right here on the scanner as well. So first thing we do is we pick the bin that that inventory is coming from, and now our user captures the serial number that they're picking for that order. This records the information to GP. We scan the serial number, Panatrack counts it as one. We scan our next serial number and Panatrack counts it as two. We have now fulfilled this order to completion. You'll notice looking at the screen that we have blues all across the board and our quantities match appropriately. <clears throat> From here, Panatrack user hits submit and that order has now been marked as fulfilled in Dynamics GP. We're not hoping our user grabbed everything correctly. We're capturing that in real time. We're updating GP in real time that, that item, uh, those items have been fulfilled for that sales order. <clears throat> now you may be wondering, Alex, what if I have to do things like a pick multiple orders at once? Well, we do support a batch pick for that. And again, something I'm happy to talk about in a one-on-one -on -one demo where we can review all of your things. If you have questions on order fulfillment here, please throw them in the chat. And at the end of our session, I'll be more than happy to give you any of those answers that I can. Now we've picked our order, but the important step where we're gonna make sure that you're getting your full use out of Panatrack and you're getting the best possible solutions with having gone with the V Technology Starship application is going to be our order verify transaction. This Let's go ahead and let's use our order verify transaction. This is where our user is going to pack that inventory to boxes so we can pass that information along to Starship and they can take over from here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our order again. User tells the system, this is the order that I am going to go ahead and verify. Now our user pulls those items, whether they're out of a cart, out of a box or a tote, our user picks those items up and places them into a shipping box. So we've got maybe a barcode on our shipping box, much like you've seen on those orders that come from Amazon and other online retailers. Scan our item. We need to verify our quantity and we need to tell the system what box that's going into. I'm gonna scan my shipping box label and we can move on to the next item on our sales order. We scan that and I've got 25 of these that are gonna fit in my shipping box SPSW. So we say okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit close box. We have filled that one up, we're sending this in two perhaps. So I hit that button and now my user can do the same thing. We move on to our item, we pack, you'll notice Panatrack shows us the remaining 27 
and I go ahead and I put those into another shipping box. I can move on to the next item on my sales order and do the same thing, enter in my quantities. We're verifying it's the right item. We're verifying the correct quantities and we're capturing the box this information, uh, these items go into. All of this information gets stored in the Panatrack ship pack tables. We take that, we pass that along to Starship and you're gonna see what happens there in just a few moments. If we have items that have serial numbers, if that's an important factor or lot numbers for our your team, Panatrack is going to do the same thing we did before we're going to make sure the correct serial numbers are getting packed to the box. This is especially important if we're dealing with things like warranty processes and knowing when a serial number was sold or for recalls that the correct lot number was fulfilled to an order and we can go back and see what customers got that lot number. We scan our serial number to that shipping box, Panatrack verifies one. We scan our next shipping uh, serial number to that shipping box, Panatrack verifies the second. Just like before, easy to understand, color-coded review screen. All of our quantities show up in full. We know exactly what box they went to. We can even go so far as to see the details right here on the Panatrack device. But your user on the floor is ready to go. They hit submit and they can move on to picking. They can move on to packing their next order. Panatrack keeps a verification code. We've captured all of that information we pass it over into Dynamics GP, we pass it over into Starship, and now you know for a fact that you have happy customers getting exactly what they ordered, and all of that information is recorded. So again, we're looking at validating our items, validating our quantities, capturing the packing box that that information is going to. Our order fulfills giving you those directed picking bins, walking your users through the warehouse with the use of multi-bin. Again, not that it's required. And of course, we're verifying lot, serial, expiration, details, attributes, all of that happens on the Panatrack devices in real time. You now have easy picking capabilities, happy customers at the end, and we don't have to worry about those paper packing lists marked up, eventually getting back and somebody sits there at the keyboard, and types all that information in to verify the orders. Panatrack is putting that control in the hands of your team on the floor when and where those transactions happen. If you have any questions on order fulfillment or on the Panatrack application as a whole, go ahead, drop those into our chat boxes here. We'll be certain to cover them at the end. Uh, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pass this back off to the V Technologies team. And Chris, uh, it's your show now. Awesome, thanks, Alex. Thank you. All right, folks, we're gonna go through a brief PowerPoint here and talk about the other half of the equation today with Starship and where we pick up from the Panatrack application. First, uh, just a little bit about V Technologies as a company, a company founded back in the late 80s, with over 30 years of experience supporting uh, parcel carrier integration. Uh, with the Dynamics GP product, uh, we've uh, started with uh, Great Plains Accounting back in the early 90s, uh, continuing with the acquisition by uh, Microsoft with the Dynamics GP platform uh, to today. Uh, we also have uh, a uh, interface for Dynamics 365 Business Central, also uh, just uh, recently published as well. Uh, we've been working with Panatrack as a partner since 2012. And currently, there's over 10,000 customers uh, as part of the uh, V Technologies family. A little bit about Starship. Uh, with our GP integration, we offer a plug and play interface uh, that offers both uh, small package integration as well as support for LTL and freight shipments. Uh, there is a function within the sales order processing module. You'll be able to call out to Starship for rate quotes as you're going through and uh, entering those into sales uh, transaction entry. Uh, with the uh, Panatracker GP integration, we have the ability to pull in the full uh, picked and packed and verified uh, items coming out of GP, as well as a package content and a unique barcode assigned to each one of the containers. And then uh, for EDI, we also have partnered with a number of um, leading solutions in the GP space, such as SPS Commerce and Data Masons. Starship gives you the ability to print uh, the GS1-128 labels for your trading partners, 
and streamline that ASN processing by uh, collecting all of the data from both the Panatrack and the Starship process, and then handing that off to the EDI solution to kind of automate that 856 for you. Uh, looking at the next slide here, you can see a number of different uh, carrier logos you may recognize. Uh, Starship, the Starship has partnered with um, all of the uh, major parcel carriers in the United States, also have picked up a number of carriers in Canada. So we have support for Canada Post, Curator, and Canpar presently, as well as UPS and FedEx if you're shipping from Canadian origins. This list is ever growing with uh, additional carriers coming on board all the time, different uh, TMS and uh, 3PL solutions. If uh, there's a particular carrier that you're working with that you don't see here, feel free to contact your customer account manager and we'd be happy to uh, track your feedback. We're always looking for uh, ways to expand the software to support other carriers. Uh, one of the other uh, big improvements with uh, the Starship product over the last few years is our e-commerce integration. We're offering about a dozen different um, plugins for various marketplaces and shopping cart platforms. Starship has the ability to work directly with your e-commerce solution to pull in order data, or we can do that as part of the uh, overall order fulfillment process. If orders from your cart or your marketplace are flowing into GP, we have the ability to pull that information out of GP, and then we can sync up with the shopping cart after the fact and send all the order data back into the uh, cart or marketplace. With that, we're going to get into the Starship demo. Let me just change screens here for a sec. All right, so when working with Panatrack, you have the ability to retrieve the data in a couple of different ways. Uh, with the traditional GP method of putting in the document number or that unique transaction ID, you can retrieve the order that way. Or with Panatrack, you have a unique barcode that's assigned uh, to each and every uh, handling unit or package that's been packed up. Uh, so you can scan that here in the first field that you come to. If you have those barcodes, if you have a barcode on your, your pick sheet as well, you can scan the order in from there. Uh, Starship also offers you this uh, kind of order management view here where you can sort and uh, take a look at all of the various transactions that are out there ready to be able to ship. You can sort by uh, the batch ID coming out of GP, any of the order header fields, customer ID, the order date, PO number, any of the address fields, ship method. Uh, but typically, uh, you have a barcode on that container. You scan that in. It's going to go ahead and select the transaction here, and we'll get started with the shipping process. So with that, we're going to read the data out of the shared tables between Panatrack and Starship that contain all that package information, as well as all the order header information coming out of GP. If you look at the top here, you have uh, all of your order information here, the source that you've pulled from, your sales transaction, both the return address and the ship to address are pulled out of GP. With the ship to address, we'll validate that. You'll see a green checkbox here letting you know that we checked the address as it came over. We'll look at the city, state, and zip. You can add the zip plus four. If you uh, want to choose the postal formatting, we can also abbreviate the streets, uh, boulevard, parkway. We'll also check the uh, zone. So if it's a residential address, a rural area, Starship will assess those additional accessorial charges and assign those to the shipment. That'll be included with the amount of freight that's written back. The carrier and service level, we're going to translate that from the ship method that can be pulled from the order header or from the line item level in GP. And probably most importantly here with the Panatrack integration, we have the packaging. So uh, instead of having to go in and assemble the shipments and just have a bunch of loose items that come over from GP and you sort of arrange the shipment on our screen, uh, on our screen by dragging and dropping, Everything that you've done on the handheld device, as Alex just showed you, that'll come over into Starship. So you have your packages here already assembled with the contents and quantities verified. Weights will come over as well if you have that um, in the uh, item master. And then you have uh, the unique IDs. So you'll have the uh, tra tracking number that comes from the carrier that's assigned when you manifest that. You'll have a unique license plate number that's assigned by Panatrack as part of the fulfillment process. You also have the ability to assign a container ID in Starship, so we have an algorithm that can assign that here if you're doing uh, EDI shipments that require that for 128 labels in the ASN. Everything's packed up, so at this point, if we're ready to ship, we can just go ahead and ship that out. 
Or at this point, we can also take a look at various carriers rates. This rated based on the carrier and service that came over from the order. Let's go ahead and rate shop that here. Starship's gonna call out to all the various carriers that you have access to rates for on your system. Looks like we made the right choice on the front end by picking UPS ground, but you can see there are other various carriers and services available that you can uh, choose from. Starship can also enforce both uh, rate shopping and ship via rules. So if you want the carrier to make that, or excuse me, the system to make that uh, carrier selection for you, you can go out and enforce your business logic and automatically select the carrier. You can see here we can sort by price. You can also sort by transit time. You can put in a date and a time when the shipment needs to be there by. So if it's a time sensitive shipment, uh, we'll filter out any of the services that can't make that transit time. We'll go ahead and leave it with UPS ground. I'll go ahead and process the shipment now. With that, it's going to manifest the packages with the carrier, get the tracking information, print out your labels, your packing list, any other documents that need to go with the shipment. If it's going overseas, your export documentation. If it's a freight shipment, your bill of lading any additional labels or documents that need to come with that as well. With that, it's going to return you back to the original screen. The cursor will be right here, ready for you to scan that next license plate. As we just processed the parcel shipment, I'm going to go ahead and also show you the freight integration as well. We have an order staged here. Same process with LTL. You're basically going to select the order based on the ship method. It will bring up the appropriate service level here. So we see this one is routed to go with RNL. Uh, same for your parcel shipments with the fulfillment process coming through Panatrack. We're going to assign that license plate to both the uh, pallet or the handling units, the skid, as well as the package and the contents. So we know exactly what's packed in each of the containers and which pallet those are on. At this point, we'll go ahead and rate shop it here with our carriers. So for freight, we have uh, about 20 different uh, LTL integrations with direct carriers. As I mentioned, we also have a number of uh, 3PL organizations that we've partnered with to get rates for that uh, can be displayed within the Starship environment. Uh, you also have the option of setting up rates through a couple of different uh, uh, TMS applications that we work with as well. Looks like RAL came up as the best rate again, so we'll go ahead and pick them here. And as that processes, you have the ability to electronically tender and upload that to the carrier. You can book the truck, print out your bill of lading. Let's take a look at a couple of different examples of our bills of lading here. Uh, with Starship, we can get bills of lading directly from the carrier, or you also have the option of uh, printing uh, some generic bills of lading through Starship. You have the uh, straight bill of lading here. We also have the VIX, a couple different templates, as well as the master bill of lading. So if you have a truckload or multi-stop type of transaction, or if you have multiple sales transactions that you're grouping together, the master bill of lading can give you some additional detail there. As I mentioned, you can also get the uh, bills of lading formats directly from the carrier's APIs for those that support it. Uh, Starship has, of course, thermal label support for your shipping labels, your package, your pallet labels, as well as your 128 labels for EDI. Uh, we also have some hybrid forms here. We can give you the packing list that can be branded uh, with logos or any additional barcodes that you want to add. Alongside the uh, shipping label and packing list, you have a couple of different formats of those. And if you're shipping overseas, you'll also have the commercial invoice. Uh, we also have the updated NAFTA form with the US MCA. Uh, for anything going into Mexico or Canada. And any of these documents can be modified with the template designer. Starship has a, a basic uh, template designer built in where you can modify any of these standard forms that are built in. So this is what's kind of underneath the bill of lading. You have the ability to remove any of the fields here, any of the text that we have. You have objects here over on the left-hand side that you can drag and drop onto the page. Uh, so you can eliminate and any of the uh, text that we have here, wipe that out or put your own verbiage in. Uh, logos or uh, graphics that you wanna to add to any documents, you can draw on the form, add barcodes. You also have the ability to insert uh, 
bands of text here. We have columns of data that line up. Each individual field or blocks of text can be edited here. Basically anything you see on the screen in Starship can be added to your forms. And there's different categories of data here. You can select exactly what it is that you're looking for. I'm in all the bill of lading fields. So just navigate to the area where you want to add a field. There you see all of our line item fields. So you can quickly and easily edit these forms, get it set up exactly how you'd like. With that, you do a save as here, give that a unique name, and that becomes another version of this form. So you could have 15 different iterations of your bill of lading, each with custom rules that would trigger that to print based on who you're shipping to, type of product, whoever the audience is, whatever the case may be, you can put conditions against each one of the documents to trigger those to print automatically. All those documents are available uh, to print as well as to PDF. Um, one of the great things about doing the PDFs is you have the ability to send those out as part of the uh, email notification that goes out. Starship has the eNotify module that's available. You can set up custom email notifications here. Each of those can be branded, so you can have your own logo, uh, color scheme, links back into your site or your cart. But then any of these shipping documents that Starship produces, we can easily grab those and insert those with the ship notification. So a copy of the bill of lading, packing list, any labels, whatever documents you need to share with your customer. Uh, hopefully that'll help uh, cut down on the number of you know, manual emails that you're sending, as well as improve your uh, customer experience because you're proactively contacting them. Uh, that can also route traffic back to your site. So any emails uh, that you're sending out go through your own email server and you'll receive responses back directly from the customer. Starship also has the ability to uh, grab a attachment from an external directory. So you can use this also to attach uh, any promotional material, literature, catalog, warranty, any type of uh, document that you may want to send as a standard attachment with any of your email notifications. Of course, that information is going to flow back into uh, Dynamics GP, so they have it available there for customer service. Starship also provides you with a customer service tool as part of the uh, license. Uh, with Starship, you have a browser-based dashboard, and this is available to, to use for anybody within the front office. You can have uh, folks that are just set up for dashboard access that can go in and take a look at the historical view of the shipments. You have uh, some basic analytics here that are built into Starship as well. It has some predefined sorts and graphs here that will give you some uh, analytics uh, on your freight spend over a period of time. You can take a look at uh, trends in shipping, as well as uh, the heat map here that'll show you exactly where the concentration of product is being sent to within the country. Uh, for historical purposes, you have access to your history here. You can set that in different thresholds of time for however, however much time you want to keep around. And with that, you can sort on all of your standard uh, GP fields that are coming over, uh, such as the PO number, uh, customer ID, order ID, basically anything coming out of GP. Starship can also query on any field that we have. So you have the ability to do lookups here on basically anything within the Starship database uh, within the time frame that you're looking for. Let me call up a transaction here. Uh, what this would uh, give you the ability to do is uh, do a lookup from the front office without having to bug anybody out in the shipping area so you can see exactly um, what was shipped over time. I uh, will give you access to the, um, the tracking information that can be set up to be tracked in the background so you can have point by point tracking up to the point it's delivered, signed for, give you visibility to exactly what was shipped over time, contents of the packages, uh, you can look at how we arrived at the freight charges as well. So Starship has uh, the ability here to uh, mark up the freight. It can uh, take your cost and apply any kind of rules or discounts on top of that. And you can drill down into the freight here to see exactly how we arrived at that price. And then any of the documents or labels that were produced, you can come back and reproduce any of those. So again, dashboard freely distributed with Starship license. Uh, anybody within the organization that you want to give access to, uh, the dashboard has the ability to do that as well. Let's take a quick look back in GP and take a look at some of the information that we pushed back onto the sales transaction as well.
Uh, so we have a number of areas that we update out of the box, and we can also customize this information as well. Uh, we have notes that we'll put into the order header comments. Um, we'll put a header and a footer around our comments, so uh, it's not going to wipe out anything that you may already have there. Um, basically tell you when it went out, when it's going to get there, uh, what makes up the shipment, the piece count, the weights, and then a little packing list here showing you exactly the item distribution. So this is coming directly out of Panatrack, which items and quantities were packed into each of these containers. And you can cross-reference that with the tracking information here. Any of these notes can be edited. You have uh, notes that can be added for both parcel and for freight. And those can be different depending on the mode of transport. Fully customizable. Uh, batch ID, we can tag the batch so that can move the transaction along the workflow um, in the front office. So you can do a lot of things with batches in GP to um, kind of automate that process, uh, automate your billing or trigger alerts to be sent. Uh, we'll also put in the freight cost here. So you have uh, the freight here with any kind of additional handling or discounts, markups that we may want to add with freight rules. I've also configured this to take my cost. So I have my exposure on the freight. Uh, $25.91 here, but with the markup, we're going to uh, invoice the customer for $39.74. Of course, we're going to update the tracking table as well, so you'll have a unique tracking number here for each of the containers that were shipped out. If it's a freight shipment, you'll also have your pro number here. Uh, some of the other things we can do um, as preferences, we can update the actual ship date on the order header. Uh, you have uh, the reverse value translations on the shipping method. So if we decided to send this by FedEx, Postal, or we sent it on a pallet, uh, Starship can reach back into GP and then also uh, change the actual ship method that was used. We'll also always insert that into the order header comments. And then the address validation. Uh, as you saw as it came over, we added the zip plus four. If we changed any of the address information, Starship can also be uh, set up to insert any of that detail here. It's not going to touch the customer card. We'll just update it on a transactional level. All right. That is pretty much what I had prepared to share with everyone today. Uh, Caroline, I'm going to send it back to you. So if there's any questions uh, coming in, they can certainly address those now. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Chris. That was a great demonstration of picking and packing and the shipping piece. Um, we do have a question. And before I get to the questions, what I'd like to do is just launch our poll. So um, we just want to make sure that um, if uh, anybody's interested in learning more about either Starship or um, the Panatrack solution, please just um, indicate that on the poll and we'll make sure that Alex or Chris gets back to you on that, that'd be great. Um, and while everybody's answering that poll, uh, there's a question here for both Chris and Alex. The question is, uh, for both Starship and Panatrack, are they on-prem or cloud solutions? Um, can each of you answer that question for us? Thanks. For the Panatrack I can take that perspective. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, from the Panatrack <laughs> perspective, uh, we can run both in the cloud, whether that's you know Azure, Concerto, whatever it is, or we can install on-prem. Um, it'll go alongside wherever you have GP. Uh, so we offer both of those, just depending on what your team's needs are. Uh, same here for Starship. Uh, with GP, uh, we can be both on-prem, could be private cloud, so it could be you know hosted or on Azure. Or Starship also has a, a cloud offering. Uh, multi-tenant uh, as well now. Awesome, thanks guys. And it looks like we have 40% who have voted. Um, if anybody else has questions, um, please indicate those in the questions pane on the control panel and we'll get to those. Um, people still voting. And give everybody just a couple of more minutes um, to make sure we get the responses. Um, Alex, is there anything else you wanted to add um, before we, um, everybody goes off to lunch? <laughs> I think from the Panatrack side, I just want to say thanks for taking the time. Uh, if your team has questions on managing your inventory, whether that's just stock counts and moving it around the facility, PO receiving, manufacturing, distribution, anything like that, please let us know. Uh, you know, we offer 
web demonstrations to everybody who has interest and we're happy to walk you through it and see how we can best solve all of your inventory woes. Uh, and that includes our competitive upgrade program. If you have some sort of system in place now and you're not happy with its performance, uh, with its capabilities, with their support, anything like that, um, we've spent 20 years working real hard to offer the best solutions we can in the Dynamics GP space, and we'd love you to give us a shot. Awesome, thanks, Alex. Um, looks like we might have had a question for Chris. Um, you know, I think we'll just take that one offline and we'll, um, oh, here we go. Um, Chris, we have one question for you. Um, if a transportation company is not supported, um, do you have a partner um, that we work with to support it? Um, any transportation partner that isn't um, maybe one of our direct integrations? Sure. Um, we have a couple different options. Uh, so Starship has uh, just a basic uh, bill of lading capability where you can set up any SCAT codes for a particular carrier or a 3PL or a logistics company that you happen to work with. That's more of the manual process. Uh, we also have partnered with uh, FreightView, which is a web-based TMS uh, that can be used to uh, support a number of uh, regional and smaller um, LTL carriers, as well as a whole host of different logistics companies as well to be set up for rates. Uh, those are not um, necessarily uh, hosted on a TMS platform. These are all web services uh, using uh, API credentials. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, we can certainly follow up with you and uh, explore whatever options uh, we have available and see if there might be a fit there for you. Awesome, thank you. Um, and one question on um, from Bill, thanks Bill, on how these um, solutions are priced. If we just wanna go into maybe modules or how that works, thanks. So from the Panatrack side, I'll let you know um, that we price by mobile computer and whichever solution level your team is looking at. So if you're looking at a distribution or just a basic stock room, that's gonna change a little bit uh, and the number of actual physical scanners you need. So we have customers who run one or two scanners. I have customers who are running upwards, I think around 120 to 150 scanners now. Uh, it scales just depending on what you need and we do try to offer the best value we can in the, uh, in the channel. So let us know and we'll be happy to work up a budget number for you so you know what you're looking at. On the Starship side, uh, we have you know two different uh, solutions. We have uh, the on-prem solution, which is more or less a la carte pricing. Um, you can get into Starship for probably between three to 5,000, depending on what you need. And then it scales upwards from there. Uh, we offer uh, concurrent, not named users. So really you're looking for um, users in the warehouse that um, would be logged in and shipping uh, concurrently. Um, and then you have you know, different uh, combinations of modules that are available for um, your different carriers, 3PLs, as well as plugins for um, different uh, e-commerce platforms, EDI that we support, um, as well as the Panatrack integration. All those are modularized. Uh, we also have the um, uh, cloud-based solution, uh, which is multi-tenant. Uh, you have uh, both monthly and yearly pricing uh, mo mo models available, um, and that will vary in price depending on the volume. So as little as uh, a couple hundred bucks up to you know probably about six or seven hundred bucks a month, depending on the combination of carriers, locations, users. Uh, so we'd be happy to you know, visit with you, give you a personal demo, and uh, Make sure we have all of your needs covered and we would position whatever option is the best for your company. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, well, it looks like um, we've answered all the questions that have been out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. I appreciate everybody who has responded to the poll. And um, right now we just have um, Chris and Alex's information on screen. So. Um, they'll, will, this um, webinar has been recorded, so we will follow up with you and provide uh, the recording so that you have it to forward to um, any other team members that might want to take a look. 
Um, and if you'd like to reach out to either Chris um, for the Starship app or Alex for Anatrack, um, feel free to um, note that here as well. Um, I think that uh, that concludes our um, webinar. We appreciate Chris and Alex spending the time to demo these great solutions, um, and we look forward to speaking to everybody soon. Take care.